the wrap up for Friday, May 6th. Uh, we're seeing the dollar stay strong, staying strong, especially against commodity currencies, but also made gains against the euro and the pound. Stocks are looking not so great, a bit gloomy. So um, same thing goes for oil and other metals. There's tension towards the non-farm perils. Before the non-farm perils, we had yesterday disappointing figures from the UK, once again, from Canada, adding fuel to the fire, and even from the United States did not move the, the boat too much. We have seen some relatively, uh, generally more hawkish leaning comments from the Fed, but bond markets don't buy it, neither do I. Um, that is cited as one of the reasons for the strength of the US dollar this week. I see the strength as a rebound, a necessary correction, not anything else. What we did have uh, tonight is another blow to the Australian dollar from the Reserve Bank of Australia, significantly lowering inflation forecasts. So let's look do a quick roundup of charts, starting with the Australian dollar. 73.75 is the current level, which I see as uh, sort of weak support. Further support only at 72.80, hit hard by the RBA. Second time this week after a rate cut earlier this week, resistance at uh, 74.40. Let's go back now to the top. Euro dollar rising a bit higher above 114.10. It fell under 114.10 and only this morning manages to break a bit above it, but not going anywhere fast ahead of the NFP. 114.60 resistance, 113.35 support. Pound dollar, 144.77 at the moment. Support at 144.40, resistance 145.10. Further resistance, 145.80, support 143.70. Dollar yen hugging the 107 level, a bit sliding at the moment. Resistance, strong resistance is at 107.65. This level cushioned the pair uh, before the big fall. Support, well, 106.10 and 105.50. Also watch out for 105. Dollar CAD, we're seeing the weakness of commodity currencies, of oil, of the Canadian dollar. Uh, moving above 128.30, still works as weak supports, resistance 129.30, 130, support stronger support at 127.50. Now, Aussie dollar we already talked about, and the QE dollar, a bit getting carried away after the Aussie, 68.50 the current level, 68.20, support, resistance 69.50. Okay, then the non from perils, drum roll in the wrap up for today. We have uh, more or less more of the same, okay? So jobs, we're expecting 203,000 jobs gained after 215 last time. If the range is between 170 and 230, my expectation is that all the focus will be on earnings. Average hourly earnings, wages expected to repeat last time, 0 0.3, month over month, 2.3, year over year. This is the bigger focus, unless we have a huge negative surprise or positive surprise in the in the headline figure. Also watch out for the participation rate and other figures. I see the current bias as dollar positive. If the report is okay or even almost okay, it could uh, trigger more dollar buying. It needs to be really bad for a dollar sell-off, especially against the yen. And it needs to be really good for some huge rally. Anyway, the bias is currently pro-dollar. So a good enough report means more dollar buying as I see it. Okay, that's the trend. The expectations haven't changed since uh, last time, uh, since last week. Anyway, uh, other figures today, retail PMI at 8 and 10 minutes. An important event for Canada, of course, uh, the Canadian jobs report at 12.30 GMT. Um, no big changes are expected there. The Canadian dollar remains vulnerable. It would need a strong jobs report in order to recover. Also watch out if you're trading the Canadian dollar, the IV PMI. So it's Jobs Friday in the wrap up for today.